Right now at 6, new details on the search of this home in Georgetown. How police say it's connected to a double murder investigation in Horry County. Plus, an update on the deadly shooting at a motel in Florence County. What deputies say led up to one man's murder. And a live look over Myrtle Beach. It might not be the best weekend to hit the sand. Chief Meteorologist Jamie Arnold is tracking rain in your first alert forecast. WNBF News at 6 starts right now. Live, local, late breaking. This is WNBF News at 6. Thanks for joining us for WNBF News. I'm Tori King. And I'm Giovanna Pringle. In some of tonight's top stories, a man is missing after swimming in the Lumber River last night. His wife with some emotional words. And a local sports complex plagued with a disaster. We'll give you more information on that in just a minute. But first tonight, new details on the investigation into the double murder at an Horry County bingo hall. Horry County police say Bradford Britton was interviewed in the case last night after a search along South Kaminsky Street, excuse me, Kaminsky Street in Georgetown. Police in Georgetown say Horry County police contacted them to tell them a vehicle possibly used in a double homicide was at a home in their area. When officers confirmed the car they were looking for was there, Horry County police and U.S. Marshals executed a search warrant at that home. Britton was taken into custody. While he was interviewed in connection to the deadly Waccamaw bingo shooting from last Friday, he's not charged in that case. He's being held tonight on separate charges out of Texas. In a breaking news update, a suspect is behind bars for a deadly shooting at Florence County Motel. Florence County Sheriff's officials say Brandon Bathia of Dillon was arrested last night for the shooting at a Fairview Inn. He's charged with the murder of 25-year-old Elijah Jackson. Officials say Jackson was shot around 10.30 Tuesday night after an argument broke out outside the motel on Lucas Street. They say Jackson came out of a room when he heard the commotion. That's when they say Bethia shot him on the second floor. The search continues for a swimmer who went missing on the Lumber River. Crews with Horry County Fire Rescue and South Carolina Department of Natural Resources spent the entire day searching for the 41-year-old. WNBF News reporter Tyrone Williams is at the scene with an update. The call went out to first responders this morning around 1220 that someone was missing in the Lumber River near Nichols. Crews spent the past 18 hours out here searching the river. Melissa Thomas says that the missing person is her husband. She says the reason they were at the river was because they haven't had power at their home for some time now and went out with friends for a late night swim to cool off. You know, like this little fun night, trying to get away from the house, not think about our troubles for a little while. And it turned out, I guess, to be tragedy now. Horry County Fire Rescue and DNR searched the river with boats and divers in the water. They spent the day methodically scanning the area in grids, searching for the missing person. I mean, they're they doing all they can do. We're just, just a waiting game now. Thomas says there were four of them at the landing last night. Their friend Mitch and her husband were the only two to go in the water. She says after he jumped in, she heard him call for help. She says her friend Mitch tried to get him in, but couldn't hold on. I kind of blame myself too because I didn't jump in to try to help him. I'm not a good swimmer. I can swim a little bit, I said, but y'all might have been coming to the search for two bodies instead of one. Thomas says her husband is a good man and a father, and she's hoping Cruz will find him. I just wish they could find him alive. I don't think it's going to happen. DNR is still looking for the man and his whereabouts. Tyrone Williams, WMBF News. The suspect accused in the deadly shooting of a 25-year-old woman last month is back in the Carolinas. 27-year-old Jasmine McLaren was arrested July 5th at the Frisco Police Department in Collin County, Texas. Records show he, she was booked at the Robinson County Detention Center last week. She's charged with first-degree murder in the death of Jamia Lachey, who was found shot in her vehicle in Lumberton June 10th. Her next court date is set for August 15th. North Myrtle Beach police need your help to identify this man. He's accused of breaking into several vehicles. Police say the incidents happened in the Windy Hill area. Call the police department if you know who he is or have information on the investigation. All right, and a quick check of the forecast here showing mostly cloudy skies. So far, so good as far as any rainfall. However, that's likely to change. First alert Doppler radar showing quite a bit of wet weather down to our south. That's going to lift its way to the north and bring us those increasing chances for showers and thunderstorms up to 40% as we work our way into the afternoon with temperatures in the mid 80s.
Funeral arrangements are set for the second SCDOT worker killed in last week's crash near Ainer. An obituary by Hardwick Funeral Home says a service for Cecil Morrison is scheduled for Sunday afternoon at 4. It's happening at Pleasant Hill Baptist Church in Conway. A visitation is also set to take place from 2 to 4 that afternoon at the church. He will be buried at the Robineth United Methodist Cemetery in Galvin's Ferry. Morgan and David Sibbeth were also were both killed Thursday while filming, oh, excuse me, filling a pothole on Highway 501. Civic's funeral is set for Thursday afternoon from 2 until 4 at Hardwick Funeral Home in Loris. More details on the SCDOT workers. A fund is set up to help those affected by the crash. SC Cares created an account to help the families of both Cecil Morgan and 29-year-old David Civic. 100% of the donations received during the months of July and August will go to their families. Donations can be made online at sc.cares.gov. You can also visit wmbfnews.com for a link to the donation page. You can find it on our live links page. A graduate of Coastal Carolina University is now the namesake of the school's College of Science. Software entrepreneur Sunny Gupta was honored today at a ceremony in Conway to officially christen the Gupta College of Science. Gupta is the co-founder and CEO of Apito a company that builds advanced data and analytics used by technology leaders. The 1992 Coastal graduate was happy to be back and reminisced about his time at the school. I came in 1989 and my memories of Coastal are just incredible. I just remember uh, working in computer science lab. It was a very small university of around 3,000 students at that time. The classes were really, really intimate and people were just really, really warm. And I also felt like the university just gave me an incredible education. The school rec recognized Gupta's generosity in what they've called one of the largest gifts it's received. Coastal says it will provide financial resources and student scholarship support for the college, which has the largest enrollment on campus. The city of Conway is hoping to bring more development to its popular riverfront area. Mayor Barbara Blaine Bellamy announced this week the city recently bought four properties in an effort to encourage private development. The properties include the 10,000 square foot lot next to Ocean Fish Market, as well as the three lots next to Bonfire, a smoke and Takira. The four pieces of land are currently vacant and development has been years in the making. We just see these as vital pieces of property that could have enormous economic impact on our community. We um, believe that by owning those properties, we'll be in a much better position and have greater opportunities to help work with potential investors um, and come up with creative ways that we can work together to make the best uses of these properties. City leaders hope to have a mix of retail and residential buildings along with restaurants and possibly even a hotel. WMBF News reporter Amy Kawada will have much more on this story throughout the evening. Coming up, a sports complex office reduced to ashes. We'll give you the details when we return. Stay with us. Summer is slowly coming to an end, which means that it's about time to begin your back to school shopping. If you're wondering how you can save money, you might want to make plans to hit the stores this weekend. South Carolina's annual sales tax holiday kicks off Friday and runs through Sunday. Eligible items range from school supplies, computers, printers, clothing, accessories, and shoes. The Coastal Grand Mall in Myrtle Beach extended its hours this weekend. It will be open Friday and Saturday from 10 in the morning until 10 at night and Sunday from 10 until 7. The Tanger outlets are also giving you more time to shop. Both locations will open Friday and Saturday from 9 until 10 and Sunday from 10 until 7. Slummer, summer is slowly coming to an end, and do you know what that means, Giovanna? Yes, I do, Tyrone. Whether you're in high school or attending college, you'll be trading in your pair of sunglasses for a textbook. Speaking of school, one of our local colleges was ranked the safest college in the Palmetto State. Francis Marion University in Florence was ranked at the top in a recent study by Homesnacks.net. It's based on information from the U.S. Department of Education's Campus Safety and Security Database, which in turn is based on mandatory crime statistics supplied by colleges and universities. The study used data from three criminal statistics, sexual assaults per student, violent crimes per student, and property crimes per student. Each school was ranked in each category and also given a cumulative score, and Francis Marion was number one in the Palmetto State. A new food line is coming to Florence in next month. The food line on 50 Pamplico Highway will open August 14th at 8 in the morning with a ribbon cutting ceremony. The first 100 shoppers will receive a $10 gift card and an apron, a reusable grocery bag. 
One lucky customer could also walk away with a $250 gift card. One lucky winner has just a couple of days left to claim some big lottery winnings. A Mega Millions winning ticket worthy $10,000 was sold in Myrtle Beach back in February, but no one has come forward to claim the prize yet. The ticket, which was bought at the Coastal Petro on Burkhole Road, expires Friday. The South Carolina Education Lottery encourages those who brought a ticket from that store to check it for the numbers you see on the screen. If you have this ticket, you are asked to claim your winnings in person at the Columbia Claim Center, not later than 4 o'clock Friday afternoon. The South Carolina Golf Course Owners Association has named TPC Myrtle Beach as the course of the year. By winning the honor, they advanced to compete for the national course of the year. TPC has hosted the Dustin Johnson World Junior Golf Championship along with the NCAA Division I Men's Championship. More than $1 million in capital improvements have been invested in the course. Now, WNBF News. First alert, Chief Meteorologist Jamie Arnold. All right, plenty of tropical moisture out there lingering down to our south and that moisture going to be streaming its way off to the north. Not only as we head through the day today, but also into parts of the weekend. That's going to keep those showers and storms in our forecast. Those storm chances for today go up to 40%, especially as we head towards the latter half of the day. Temperatures start to work their way well up into the 80s and notice those rain chances as we work our way through the weekend. 40% today. But those chances go up to 60% as we head into the day Saturday and most of that rain on Saturday likely comes during the first half of the day. That means if you do have some of those outdoor plans on Saturday, Saturday morning through about Saturday lunchtime looking to be on the wet side. So don't be surprised early tomorrow morning if you get a little uh, early wake up call from Mother Nature, some rain on the rooftop, some rumble of thunder. But I think maybe beach plan Saturday afternoon should look a lot better. All right. Oh, sorry. What? What about that weekend rain? Uh, yeah, up? definitely. Again, early in the day tomorrow, but then I think Sunday we're back to just more typical afternoon storms. Okay. So we're looking good this weekend. We're yes, looking we are. somewhat Not too good. bad at all. Not all too right. hot. Yep. All right. The new nature center at Huntington State Park is set to open in the spring of 2020. The center was destroyed by the fire in July 2016, which was caused by a lightning strike. Inside were 20 animals. South Carolina Parks officials say the new center will be 4,500 square feet and will incorporate a birding area, classroom and exhibit area showcasing live animals. The project is estimated at $187,000, but Huntington State Park has already received $120,000 through private donations and continues to accept more. Slight is it? SLED IS INVESTIGATING A MOBILE HOME FIRE IN LORIS. Horry COUNTY FIRE RESCUE RESPONDED TO THE CALL AT 3216 LAKE DRIVE AT AROUND 6 O'CLOCK THIS MORNING. OFFICIALS SAY THE STRUCTURE WAS FULLY ENGULFED WHEN CREWS ARRIVED AND NO ONE WAS LIVING IN THE HOME. NO INJURIES WERE REPORTED. POLICE ARE INVESTIGATING AN OFFICE BUILDING AT A SPORTS COMPLEX THAT WENT UP IN FLAMES LAST NIGHT. TORY KING IS AT THE RIPKIN EXPERIENCE TO FIND OUT MORE. Tournament season continues here at the Cal Ripken Experience, despite an unexpected curveball this weekend, a fire that destroyed their office buildings. According to that field's manager, the office buildings took on extensive damage. General Manager Bobby Holland says a lightning strike Saturday evening may have started the fire. Despite the total loss, the show goes on. 43 boys baseball teams, close to 2,000 players, take the diamond from all over the U.S. this week. Field officials say while the loss of personal keepsakes is tough, the future is bright. But uh, yeah, our office is completely demolished. You know, it's um, uh, a little bittersweet for, for our staff. Personal losses, you know, can't stop us from making sure that these teams out here this week, you know, make great memories and so forth. The cause of the fire is still unknown and investigators are hard at work trying to get to the bottom of it. Live here in Myrtle Beach, Tori King, WMBF News. Fire investigators are working hard to determine the cause of the fire. We'll update you when the report comes in. The weather is heating, which means more people are flocking to the beach. More people on the beach means more interactions with wildlife. Stay tuned for ways on how you and your loved ones can protect yourselves in the water. Breaking news at this hour, Conway police says one person was shot and police are now searching for a shooting suspect at this time. Authorities say there are two scenes. This is the video we just got into the newsroom. One at Robert Laney Drive, another at Highway 378 and Hemingway Street. Officers say they were called around 4 this afternoon. Police are asking people to shelter in the place in those immediate areas. A helicopter has reportedly been requested for the victim. 
No word right now if the victim was taken to a hospital on it or in an ambulance. Stay with MB WMBF News as we work to learn more. Live in the Breaking News Center, Tyron Williams, WMBF News. And take a close look at your screen. Florence police need your help to find this shoplifting suspect. Authorities say he stole electronics from the Walmart on North Beltline Drive July 8th. He appears to have a drink, a Monster Energy drink logo and barbed wire tattoos on his lower leg. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Florence Police Department. Myrtle Beach police arrested a man who they say used his phone to look up a 19-year-old employee's dress at a Broadway at the beach store. 22-year-old Malcolm Giles is charged with voyeurism. Police say they were called to the Vintage House Surf Shop, where the victim says she was helping Giles with purchasing items. The police report states Giles kept asking the employee to retrieve items for him that required to reach up high. While she was assisting him, she looked down and noticed his phone laying on the floor, pointing up her dress. When police arrived, Giles admitted to the officers what happened, and his phone was taken for evidence. Bennettsville police need your help identifying the person on your screen. Take a look. He's a person of interest in a burglary and grand larceny investigation. The incident happened shortly after noon on July 13th at the Dairy Dream. If you or anyone you know has information on the person's identity, please call the Bennettsville police. Going to the beach to get some relief from the heat is always great, but while your family and friends are enjoying themselves, make sure you take a few precautions when entering the water. That's right. The Myrtle Beach Fire Department says the number of stingray injuries across the Grand Strand has increased this summer. WNBF News reporter Giovanna Pringle joins us on how you can protect yourself and your family from being stung while soaking up some sun at the beach. Do you plan on going to the beach anytime soon? Well, you might want to take a few precautions before you get in the water. Within the last two weeks, the Myrtle Beach Fire Department responded to seven stingray stings. Because of the demand, the department needed to order more kits to treat the injuries. The stingray kits cost around $30 and can only be used once. The question is, what is causing the increase in stings and what steps can you take to prevent yourself from getting stung? Myrtle Beach Fire Battalion Chief Brian Mitchell suggests doing the stingray shuffle while entering the water. He says shuffling your feet along the ocean floor sends out vibrations, which can alert stingrays nearby. If, if you don't call us, uh, definitely get to a physician, get to a doctor, go to the, the hospital, uh, and make sure you, you, you know that there's nothing left in there behind by the stingray. If you are stung, you should flush the area with hot water and seek medical attention due to the risk of infection. Even if you take it out, that's not the end, typically, of, of the issue because it has a, a coating, basically a skin on it, that has cells in it that produce the venom and they could still, the venom could still reside in it. Remember, the next time you're in the water, you can never be too safe. So do the Stingray Shuffle. Reporting in Myrtle Beach, Javonna Pringle, WNBF News. And this just in, two people were arrested after they told police their drug use inside a motel room may have caused a one-year-old to have seizures. Andrew and Sarah Stevenson are both charged with two counts of unlawful neglect of a child. The two were staying at the Vancouver Motel in Myrtle Beach on July 14th with two children who were one and four years old, according to arrest warrants. Both admitted to using a number of drugs, including marijuana, mushrooms, and meth, while the children were present. The one-year-old started having seizures and was taken to the Grand Strand Medical Center. The police were called about the suspected child abuse after the Stevensons told the staff about the drug use. An investigation into a possible meth lab in a church parking lot ended with two arrests. The Marion County Sheriff's Office says the incident happened this morning at Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church on Penderborough Road. Investigators determined there was not a meth lab, but they did find chemicals reacting to each other in the car. Authorities say one of the suspects is wanted out of Virginia, but no names or specific charges have been released. And happening right now, a funeral for one of the S two SCDOT workers killed while filling a pothole on Highway 501. 29-year-old David Sibick was killed one week ago today when Highway Patrol says a freight liner hit the two vehicles, stopped in traffic before striking Sibick and Cecil Morgan. Sibick's funeral just started at 4 o'clock at the Hardwick Funeral Home in Loris. Services for Morgan are scheduled for Sunday afternoon at 4 at Pleasant Hill Baptist Church in Conway. A visitation is also set to take place from 2 to 4 that afternoon at the church. South Carolina Highway Patrol is working to determine if the driver involved will face charges. The State Department of Labor Licensing and Regulation is also investigating. 
WMBF News continues to follow the mediation happening right now between the city of Myrtle Beach and Horry County over the legal dispute surrounding hospitality fees. The meeting started this morning at 9 in the Myrtle Beach Convention Center behind closed doors. A judge ordered both parties to begin the process to reach a re resolution and a ruling last month. The judge also appointed an attorney to serve as a mediator. The city sued the county in March, claiming it illegally collected millions of dollars in hospitality fees. WMBF News reporter Patrick Lloyd will have more on the meeting tonight on WMBF News at 5. And Coastal Carolina University is giving back to those who truly need it by offering free transportation to the homeless. The school's Rolling Forward program provides free bicycle rentals to those at New Directions, a men's homeless shelter. The bikes are used so that they can go to the grocery store, visit friends, and most importantly, apply for jobs. Since the project started last year, more than 250 different clients have borrowed bikes. More details on Chanticleer football. If you can't wait until the end of this month to celebrate the Chants, you don't have to. Today, the CCU football announced its Fans Appreciation Day is Saturday, August 10th. This free event is the newly renovated Brooks Stadium. It's filled with different activities, including a team scrimmage at 2 o'clock, an autograph session at 4, and a chance to tour the new premium seating area. There will also be a kids zone and each kid will get a team poster. We shared more information on Fan Appreciation Day on WBFnews.com. Just look for this story on the live links page. And when this new CCU football season rolls around, Horry County Council wants to do something big to thank its employees. Our news partners at My Ori News say the council plans to spend nearly $60,000 for the November 2nd homecoming matchup against Troy. The celebration will include a tailgate, tickets to the game for each of the county's more than 2,200 employees, and stainless steel tumblers. City County officials plan to use some of their money budgeted for top three administrative positions that became vacant in recent months, but have yet to be filled. The proposal for the event passed the administration committee this week, and it still needs approval from the full council. All right, let's talk about the weather here as we work our way into the weekend. Notice future radar there tomorrow morning. Likely going to be a very wet start to Saturday. Rain and storm is probably going to give you an early wake up call tomorrow. I think, though, by the time we head into Saturday afternoon, things start to improve and then just a couple more pop up storms as we work our way into Sunday. So not a weekend washout, but just keep in mind some downpours at times, especially early, early Saturday. So definitely the best time to go to the beach is going to be sometime next week. Yeah, either next week or even tomorrow afternoon. Sunday should get some uh, decent beach time in. Okay, okay. perfect. Hey. Well, all right. that's all of our time here at 6. WNBF News will be here back at 7 with more information.